Hello again and welcome. In this video I'm going to continue my discussion on discharging this bank of capacitors. One of the questions that was asked is why I just didn't use a standard microwave capacitor and I think the issue that you would have using a capacitor like that is they're not designed for a pulse discharge application. So what I have here is some film capacitors. These have a high dBdt as well as a pulse current rating. So that's the reason that I'm using this setup here. And so one of the topics that we're discussing is would we be better off using the low Z input of the meter instead of the resistance mode. Somebody had brought up the Fluke 289 and they showed the schematic here. And I just wanted to kind of show you the path that they've laid out. So this is our input here. And you can see this input goes through this 1K resistor through the PTC down through this switch so this is the low Z switch then he's got another PTC that goes off to the return path he's also got this path here with this one meg resistor and that goes into the MOVs now you can see they have two MOVs here that tie to this common point back to this MOV going to the return ground so if we were to apply something higher than what this MOV voltage is, and these MOVs are rated for 910 volts each, so you know about 2,000 volts is where we're going to clamp at. So that's going to limit the voltage across this switch contact to 2,000 volts. So let's compare that with the 121GW. In that meter, you can see here's our input lead. Down here, we have our two PTCs. Here's our switch. To enable the low Z mode and then it goes back to the analog ground back to the return path so in this meter you'll notice that the MOVs are both after where these two PTCs are so if I were to put a high voltage on this these MOV clamps will protect everything downstream from them but unfortunately the voltage that's across these two points is being applied directly across the switch contacts and if you watch my review of the 121 GW, again, this is the meter that I tested. The very last test that I performed, I had noticed that this meter was arcing when I had it in the resistance mode using our transient generator set to 2 kV. You could hear it snapping. So I opened this thing up. I had the circuit board out and I was looking at the board and I could see it break down. And so I went ahead and I supplied a larger transient to this and I ended up arcing across these two pads and it damaged the circuit board. So in my opinion this Fluke 289 is a superior design because we are limiting the voltage across these switch contacts which we're not doing with the 121GW. Now unfortunately outside of this 121GW I really don't have a lot of meters that support this low Z mode. One of them that does is the Bryman BM789. So let's just go ahead, we'll plug the two leads into the input of the meter, and you can see it's basically an open circuit. Now let's go ahead and select the low Z mode, and you can see it reads basically 2.1K ohms. Now if I select the normal voltage mode, you can see it basically reads an open circuit. Let's have a look at the 121GW. Again, I had cleaned up the circuit board on this, so... Uh, that circuit board has been damaged, but we should be able to read the resistance here. So you'll notice again, it's reading 3K ohms on the input. So one of the questions is, what happens if we increase this capacitance? So instead of the 1 microfarad that I've currently been testing with, what would happen if this was a 10 microfarad or a 100 microfarad? So what I'd like to do is apply 2000 volts DC, basically infinite capacitance, and let's just see what happens with the Bryman BM789. So here we have a prototype circuit board out of a Bryman BM789. Now this is a very early board. You can see it actually has some jumpers on it. You can see the front end on this is all populated. So what I'm going to do is you can see I have a little pad here. I'm going to solder across and this is going to engage this low Z mode. So again with this meter you can see here's our input jack. It spans off to these two 1K ohm resistors. That goes to these two PTCs. And then the two PTCs go to these two MOVs, which go to this common point, which goes to this MOV, which goes to the return path to ground. And what ends up happening is when we short this out, that takes this node here and grounds that. So our path is through this resistor, through the PTC, 
and then into the ground return path. So that's our low impedance path for the low Z mode. You'll notice too that they're physically using a larger PTC for that function. Once we apply 2000 volts, what will happen is we'll start to heat up these PTCs and these will go into a current limit. And then what's going to happen is we're going to force that current through these MOVs. So these MOVs can actually become damaged. So let's first take a look and see where this meter starts to break down at. So to do that, we're going to be just using our ESD gun here. So let's go ahead and we'll attach the two leads of the output of this to the input of our BM789 circuit board. So here we are at 1200 volts. You can see it's having no problem supplying that. And here we are at 2000 volts. I'm expecting it to start folding back. Yeah, so right about there. So 2050 volts. So the roughly 2000 volts is where our mobs start to conduct. So we can probably safely run this thing at 2000 volts input. Of course, I don't have a rotary switch for this circuit board. So you can see I just have a piece of braid. This is actually some solder wick. I'm just going to solder this right across the two pads. Here I have my BM869S. Again, we'll just select resistance mode and let's attach it right across the inputs of the meter. And again, you can see we're measuring roughly 2.15 K ohms or so. Then I've gone ahead and I've connected our high voltage power supply to the inputs of the meter. Let's just take our Brahman BM869S now and we'll attach that across the inputs of the meter. Now we can go ahead and start turning up our input voltage. And you'll notice that basically the power supply immediately starts folding back. You can see we only get about 1.7 volts or so out of this power supply. So we need a lot beefier power supply to drive the input of this. Again, the input impedance here is 2K ohms. So if we take 2,000 volts divided by 2,000 ohms, we need a 1 amp power supply. That's quite a bit. So of course we can't get enough current out of this little fly swatter power supply to overcome the 2K input impedance of our Brahman BM789. So what I've done is, while well, I've left our little fly swatter power supply attached, we're going to be using the supplied kilovolts power supply to charge up our capacitor bank. The reason we need the capacitor bank is this power supply doesn't put out enough energy to start heating up the PTCs on the board to increase the input impedance. So you can see I currently have the voltage across our capacitor at basically 240 volts. What I'm going to do now is just take our meter and attach that directly across the capacitor bank. And let's see if our power supply errors out. And it so far is not appearing to trip. And here we are back at 240 volts. I would imagine that PTC is heating up. Oh yeah, it definitely is. <laughs> so before we go burning a hole in the bench, we'll just raise the board up, support it with a couple of blocks of wood. Oh yeah, that PTC is hot. All right, let's go ahead and we'll start increasing our voltage. So here's 250, 300, Here's 500. Here's 1,000. Again, don't try this at home. This capacitor bank combined with this power supply could definitely end your life. So this isn't something you should be playing around with. This is the limit of our power supply. So you can see we're putting out pretty close to 2,000 volts, 19,778. I'll just bring out our clock. Now the mobs themselves don't appear to be getting warm at all. Our 1K ohm resistor, those are both cold. The PTC is extremely hot. Like we'd expect, it's basically dropping all the voltage. And the mobs have a little heat. I can't tell if that's from the circuit board conducting up through the leads. But I can definitely feel a little bit of warmth in them. Alright, I'm just going to let this thing set.
All right, so it's been a couple of minutes. Again, the mobs have some warmth to them, but not much. So it's one thing to test a dead circuit board. Let's just try the same test, but we'll be using the real Bryman BM789. Again, you can see we're in the low Z mode. And let's go ahead and we'll start cranking up our input voltage. I have to turn this up kind of slow, otherwise this capacitor bank will trip the overcurrent limit of the power supply. Again, it should be starting to heat. I'm not adjusting the power supply right now. We're right at the knee of the PTCs. Here we go. Now that the impedance is starting to increase, we can go ahead and turn up the supply a little faster. Again, these two meters basically match voltage-wise. This is a 1,000 to 1 divider. All right, let's turn it up a little higher. So here we are, basically 2,000 volts across our BM789. And again, we'll just let this thing sit for a few minutes. You can see the Bryman BM789 is having any problems. And we've been at 2,000 volts now for several minutes. Let's go ahead and we'll turn off our power supply. And let's go ahead and discharge the bank. Let's go ahead and we'll replace the Bryman BM789 with the 121GW. Now again, this meter has been damaged. And I actually damaged the circuit board. I had gone in and cleaned that area up. So it should be okay to run this lower voltage. Let's just see what happens here. I'm actually thinking that the meter isn't going to have any issues with this. All right, so let's go ahead. You can see we're putting out about 97, 98 volts. So it is reading the correct voltage. Of course, it's overranging. That's uh, going to be annoying. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I just heard it. Something just broke down in the meter. Yeah, let's go ahead and discharge our bank real quick. And we'll turn off our power supply. I got a feeling that whatever happened to this, we might have just frapped the input again. Let's just see real quick, so we'll set the brime in here to resistance mode. And let's just see, do we still, oof, yeah, it's a little hot. It's starting to cool down. My guess is we probably flash back over those same two switch contacts. Again, they don't have a slit or anything between the two pads. And those pads are pretty tight together, so I think it just can't handle that high a voltage. That and with the circuit board being previously damaged, there still may be a little bit of carbon buildup in there. Well, anyway, I think that's going to be it for this video. The only thing that we can really take away from this video is that, at least as far as the capacitance is concerned, I would be comfortable using the Bryman BM789 in the low Z mode to discharge a much larger capacitor bank than this one microfarad capacitor bank that we're using here. Well, that's all for now. We'll see you in the next video. Later.